There we go. Welcome, everyone. Uh, in the spirit of respect, authenticity, and reconciliation, the town of Slow Lake honors and acknowledges that we are situated on the traditional lands of the sovereign First Nation within Treaty 8 territory, home to Indigenous, Métis, Inuit peoples who have occupied these lands since time immemorial. And with that, we'll begin our meeting. Our agenda in front of us. Councillor Adams. Motion to adopt the agenda as presented. All those in favor? That is carried. Okay, CEO update. Uh, thank you. So I'll just highlight, you have a CEO update that's before you. I'll just hit some of the high points for each of the different areas. Um, recruitment is resumed uh, following the approval of our budget. So we have a number of positions that are still uh, actively seeking applicants, uh, executive assistant, a couple casual positions, a human resource advisor, uh, manager of information technology, uh, program coordinator and a public works operator at various stages of the recruitment process. Uh, finance is working on year end and final GST return for 2022. Uh, finance is working with the project manager and director of or community services on a grant for MRC refurbish for refurbishment project through a federal green and inclusive community buildings program. Uh, if successful, this grant could pay up to 80% of the project cost for the project or approximately $780,000. The deadline for that grant is at the end of this month. Um, in terms of taxes, we're working with KCL Consulting, our assessor on properties for upcoming assessment update for March assessment letters. Uh, pension reconciliation has been completed and all filings to LAPP have been submitted. We're preparing T4s to be later issued to uh, our town staff uh, later this month. Uh, operations, semi-annual water samplings taking place, wastewater lagoons, full profile sampling and resident CC repairs are all been happening this uh, over the last month here. Public Works continues to uh, progress through their winter uh, road service program. So sanding, regular cycle, um, recycling center cleanup, pushing back windrows to start clearing for drainage. Uh, and gra grading gravel is needed. Uh, our projects start to look forward thinking here now. So we're working with contractors to revise estimates on approved projects for 2023, uh, completing again, uh, some grant applications for some of those projects uh, and looking for extensions for others. Uh, we're starting to prepare RFPs and RFQ documents for these projects for 2023 revising contract documents, which we use later in the year for our projects. So tightening up some of the conditions in terms of deliverables and uh, penalties for late or non-compliance. Um, yeah, and most recently, actually project department just uh, posted on our Facebook page and social media channels, a request for design input that was sent out, uh, looking for some input from the community and potential artists for our downtown public art piece. Uh, with uh, so that was just pushed out on Monday. With I believe it was a two week sort of turnaround time that we're looking for on that. Uh, under communications, uh, the communications plan uh, draft plan was completed, and I believe that's for discussion tonight. Uh, we concluded or completed the snow removal survey developed, uh, we continue to work towards the launch of our Engagement HQ platform. Um, and just a quick summary of our kind of current subscribers as of um, as of recent here with Facebook followers about 7,400. Facebook pay reach page is about 23,000, which is about a 32.5% increase from the previous month. And our page visits are getting about 9,000. Uh, economic development state of the lake was rescheduled for April 5th at the Legacy Center based on the keynote speaker availability. Uh, invitations have been sent out um, through, uh, were sent out to the Slave Lake and District Chamber of Commerce, uh, who will be responsible for managing the registration. Rural renewal community designation application has been submitted. The Northern and Regional Economic Development grant application was submitted. Uh, and the Economic Development Advisory Committee board application. So we've we've posted a, a call letter to the community uh, in regards to soliciting applications for members to participate on that board. Uh, planning and development continues to hold ongoing meetings with the operators of Big Fish uh, Bay regarding various development projects that they have on place. Most recent approval for the Big Fish Bay was the inflatable water slide that they plan to open this summer. Um, fire department has seen total calls to date for 2023 of 53. Um, 
Total calls for December was 45. January responses, they had seven alarms, one gas leak, 16 co-medical response uh, calls, 18 motor vehicle collisions, one outside fire and two structure fires. Community services, uh, the pound is, for enforcement, the pound is currently full as the animal, as is the Animal Rescue Society. So currently they have no capacity for any extra dogs that are on the loose. Aquatics is running courses to train potential new staff. So they're looking into hosting a second round of courses in the coming months. Uh, swimming lessons are still in high demand. They're hosting a Valentine's Day swim, or we're hosting one on Sunday, and they're coordinating a St. Patrick's Day fun swim for March. Um, under recreation and programming, recruitment still in progress for the program coordinators maternity leave coverage. Frost Fest will run from February 10th to 20th. There's a full schedule this year. Uh, we have posted and listed a number of those activity or events uh, through our social media streams. And the Legacy Center will be getting an upgrade to their lighting system February 15th and 16th. Stage North has been an integral um, stakeholder in helping move that project ahead. And that is all I have other than further questions. Questions for CAO? Councillor Adams? Uh, <clears throat> on page three of your report there under communications, uh, you've got the uh, the Facebook and Instagram reach numbers that you're using. Uh, are, are those due to an increase in paid advertising or is that an organic growth? I'll let you know. Uh, it's a little bit of both. We have had a couple of spons sponsored or boosted ads in the last couple um, of posts, as well as some comments. We've had a couple of posts with a lot of comments. The more comments we get on a particular post, the more reach it it'll have. So it's a combination of sponsored posts um, and uh, comments on posts. Okay, I'll keep going. Yeah, first, Steve. Okay, uh, same, same thing, I guess. But uh, is, since we're reporting statistics on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Voyant, should we, or is it beneficial uh, to report on our website statistics at all? Like, is that, do we use that for any sort of engagement on top of those mediums, or is our website not really used? Take it. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so as, as I'll present today uh, with our communication plan, moving forward, we kind of want the website to be an information-only site. So uh, page visits would definitely be a, a, a good statistic. In terms of engagement, we want to move away from the website and towards Engagement HQ, but uh, if council desires, I can certainly add um, website page visits to the monthly statistics. statistics sorry. Yeah. And one more question, then I'm done. <laughs> So just for my information, what happens now that the animal shelter and uh, we're full there, what happens now? Because I'm sure it didn't, just didn't go that we're no longer having animals for having problems. Yeah, and I, again, at the time of this report, so this report would have been generated um, as a Friday and it would be a fluid, that sort of status, whether it's full or unfull, would probably be changing on a daily basis. So whether that's reflected now or not, I think the 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 amount of time that it was full was very short. Um, it was just current at the time of this report. We don't really have any other plans or any other provisions for um, any stray dogs, maybe or, or whatever the complaint may be that we come across if we aren't able to necessarily lodge them in one of those two facilities. Um, I don't know if the Animal Rescue Society has a plan B or another, you know, a partner arrangement or another agency in another town that they're able to to move some of these animals or not between the two. I'm not exactly sure, but I can find out more for you if you like. Thank you. That's it. Councillor Hughes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I just had a question regarding the state of the lake, Jeff. Um, is this going to be open to community members as well? Like, will the town of Slave Lake just be advertising it for any members of the community who want to attend? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. again, the chamber is going to take the lead on on the registration for that event. Um, and those, those are going to be you know set number of tickets or set number of spaces that the facility will be able to hold. So right. we would love for it to be full out, but uh, essentially will be open to the public, open to businesses uh, that are interested in coming and hearing some of the guest speakers. Um, there'll be guest speakers from a uh, variety of industries, so forestry industry, or oil and gas industry, uh, and the goal would be also potentially 
to have uh, our new mayor elect potentially do uh, a presentation, you know, in terms of what we're seeing in terms of economic growth and opportunity from the town's perspective. So okay. it'll That's definitely great. be open to everybody. It'll be a first come first serve sort of registration. But again, look for that to come from the chamber. I've had uh, a lot of interest expressed to me about attending the event and just kind of looking for a little bit more information. Um, even our contact at Travel Alberta had heard of it. It plans to come here to attend it as well. Excellent. So whatever you guys are doing, keep doing it. But I'd love to get the message out to the community members who might be interested as well. So thank or, you. Uh, is Travel Alberta just looking to see what's going on or do they want to speak on it? I mean, I didn't ask that specifically because I know I'm not the one planning it. If you're looking for speakers, it could be an opportunity. But I think he was just more wanting to attend, you know, as an economic development type of standpoint and just kind of see what's happening in the region. And um, we're going to utilize his time while he's here as well, tourism society wise. So it works good for us. But unless you're looking for spaces. <laughs> or other well, speakers i don't think at this time but it's always good to have a block at plans for sure yeah well keep me posted <laughs> any other questions for jeff no okay look for a motion councillor hughes motion to accept the cao report as presented on a question those in favor that is carried management task list uh, so again, this is a like standard where we present at the committee of the whole meetings. Typically, it's just an update on various initiative or various motions that were passed or directed towards administration. Um, so I'm open to any questions you may have in regards to some of these. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just have a question. Um, so back in June, I had made a motion about reaching out to the Ministry of Seniors and Housing and asked for clarification around municipal tax exemptions uh, for social housing owned by private landowners. Uh, just wondering where that is or if we've had any information back on that yet. Uh, I don't believe so, but I can follow up. So that's motion 272-22. Correct. Okay. okay. Councillor Brandel. Um, more of a request, I guess. Um, a pet peeve about this task list is that there's about 20 items that say not specified for the timeline. Um, and, and I get like I, I get where you've put the progress and some have been, um, you know, we're obviously waiting on inf information or other departments. Um, but for instance, there's one um, the Councillor Hughes made back in May and it says that we are going to get a report in November of 22. So which one are you referring That's to? That's the credit card one. Um, I have the number here if you want to. Yeah, I see that one too, yeah. Yeah, I actually asked about that one last meeting. That was my question again this year, just because it said report coming November. So just wanting to follow up with that. Yeah, yeah myself. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, maybe, I don't know, for other, the next meetings or something, maybe we could put some sort of a ballpark timeline. And then, okay. and then even if it's like a, a sliding scale and it gets moved when we're still waiting for information, but okay. the not specified kind of, I don't know, irks me. <laughs> we, we originally kind of left those open-ended to give administration time, but I, I totally get what Councillor Brandel's saying because time's evaporating and it's gone. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So, Councillor Adams? You took what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to add to that as well, um, <laughs> I find this uh, difficult to read being in a chart in a Word document. Is it? possible to be able to organize this by due date then uh, so that the most recent ones on top that's coming up and it would be top of mind that way rather than ones that are going to be due in a year or we're waiting on uh, Alberta environment for example uh, not a high priority or at least not should not be at the top of the list and I do agree with you on uh, having a due date and whether or not that due date gets changed I'm I'm fine with but yeah so right now they're just organized by motion number so mm -hmm. Steve would like them organized by date, which sounds great to me. And then they can be moved up and down depending on the progress. And yeah, it's actually. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll just ask a question on my motion. Uh, number 363-22. I've seen that going on Facebook. Have we had any people engaging with it? The uh, the public art RFP? Is Have we getting any submissions or no? So that just went out on Monday. Um, so we had, we had designed the, the I don't think we've received anything since Monday, Nothing. um, which was yesterday. Does it typically go kind of slow just out of curiosity? We're yeah. yeah. Oh, so this is normal. Okay, cool. Thank you. Kush. 
Anything else? Oh, yeah, uh, motion from someone. Councillor Brandle, we'll do it. Okay. I'll accept that as very information. Call the question, those in favor. That is carried. Okay. Uh, reports to new business. CN Caribou Trail Crossing Project. <laughs> There we go. Thank you. Uh, good evening, your worship members of council. The purpose of this report is to provide a project update to council on the CN Caribou Trail Crossing. Uh, this project was identified in 2015 after compl after completing a site review uh, related to safety concern with CN and Transport Canada. Uh, safety concerns noted at the crossing included, but are not limited to variances in train speed, uh, close proximity of the intersection to the storage track switch, uh, road traffic volumes, type of traffic, close proximity to adjacent in intersection and driver distractions. At the, time of, at the time of the review, CN and town administration agreed that the installation of an automated warning system consisting of flashing light signals, extra light units and bell with constant warning devices would be an overall um, improvement to the level of safety at the crossing. Uh, additionally, town administration indicated CN that a con uh, to consider installing gates at the crossing. Uh, Transport Canada indicated support for application under the grade crossing Im Im improvement program for the installation of automated warning system with gates. Uh, town's, co con town's contribution was 12.5% of the actual cost and the rest was contribution from Transport Canada. Uh, CN filed an application for um, the above said upgrades uh, on July 31st, 2015 with Transport Canada. Uh, Transport Canada confirmed that all the applications are reviewed on an uh, annual basis using risk-based process and projects are subse subsequently approved based on risk. Uh, due to the limited fun funds uh, within the program, it may be several years before some projects are approved. Uh, since submitting the application in 2015, administration continued to follow up with CN for updates. Uh, also, capital budget was carried since the period of application. Uh, the amount carried in 2023 was 60,000. Uh, recently, after following up with CN, it was confirmed that Transport Canada did not select this crossing after several years on the application list. Uh, Public Works Department within CN confirmed uh, the Caribou Trail crossing has a stop sign and meets Transport Canada's grade crossing regulations uh, as a compliant crossing, uh, which may be one of the reasons for not approval of the application. Uh, they also confirmed that the funding model has recently changed. Uh, going forward, Transport Canada will pay 80% and the rest 20% would be covered by the town. Uh, town administration asked for revision of estimate as the previous estimate was last provided in 2015 for an amount of approximate uh, cost of 270,000. Uh, CN replied that in order for their signal teams to provide uh, estimate for the work, they require stamped engineering drawings to be submitted beforehand. Uh, such task would cost approximately 15 to 20 additional thousand to the town. Uh, with recent material cost increases, along with higher than usual inflation, the estimated cost for signal upgrades could be around 400,000 or more. Uh, based, based on that 20% of the town contribution would amount to $80,000 or more, uh, plus the cost of stamp engineering drawings, which could bring the total estimated cost of the project around 100,000 or more. So council has a couple of options here. They can continue with the project or uh, we uh, do not proceed with the project. Uh, amount, uh, any amount over approved funding of 60,000 would require additional funding through reserves or other funding source. If council decides to not proceed with the project, then any unexpended funding amount uh, will be allocated back to the reserves. Uh, administration recommends council to not proceed with the project due to the additional uh, cost increase expected uh, for the project. Uh, also additionally, the uh, condition of the crossing has not changed since 2015 with no records of significant uh, safety related incidents or concerns. Uh, 
Uh, even with resubmitting the application, the chances for securing the grant amount is very marginal. Thank you, Kush. Any questions, Councillor Brandel? Yeah, I remember when this came up after the derail derailment in 2015, um, and it was CN that brought it to Council. It wasn't something that Council was actually seeking out, so um, we only kept it on the radar on budget ever since if the, the grant was available. And at 12.5%, it sounded doable, but mm. <clears throat> at 95 or 100, uh, it's not doable for me, that's for sure. So uh, I'll... Councillor Adams and then Councillor Ferguson. Uh, I'm on the opposite end of this, apparently. <laughs> uh, I feel this is something we should continue to proceed towards. I mean, having having it cost us 20% as opposed to 100%, I think is a, a lot better. And a question I have for you is on the engineer drawings. From crossing to crossing on an en stamped engineer drawing, what's the difference between the existing one we have now and having that stamped engineer drawing? And having it modified, what? Why would it cost twenty thousand dollars to? Because we don't have any existing stamp drawings. What's this? At but this main, crossing? no, Main Street is different, right? Your your street alignment also affects your engineering drawings. Right. Yeah, because Caribou Trail, as you see, it comes and it goes around the angle, and also like the width of the Caribou tra Trail is a little bit, I would say, wider than Main Street, uh, and uh, that that affects, and also the nearest kind of like. Um, any street that goes close to the intersection, uh, whether it's north or the south, that will also affect the drawings, right? But that one's on a straight stretch. It has an intersection just like this one does coming in on a side street. The only difference is, like you say, on the width of the street. Yeah. But I find it interesting that you can't possibly modify an engineered drawing. I'm like, we can try, but I'm pretty sure they will come back and say, um, we need the drawings for the actual kind of like crossing. Well, I understand we'd have to do drawings for the crossing. I just don't understand why we can't just modify an existing and why that would cost $20,000. I'm like, we will still need to do survey, right? Because your road elevations I are different. I understand the yeah. survey would still be required, which we're already doing two of in town, right? Uh, yeah, for other projects. But as far as this is something down the road, I think is important for Slave Lake and its growth. I think it's something that we're going to find is necessary. And if we pass up an opportunity to have at least part of it covered by government funding, whether it's a long shot or not, I think would be a mistake. Councilor Ferguson. Uh, just a quick question here. Does it cost us anything to stay on the list? No, it doesn't. Okay. And so if hypothetically, if we get approved and then council's will is to not proceed with it at the time, we could just say, sorry, we don't want to move ahead with it. Correct. It doesn't obligate us to move ahead with it if we do get selected. Uh, I'll have to read the letter that was presented in 2015, but I think um, we have to confirm first that council um, is in agreement to move ahead with the application. Because my thoughts are here that at some point in the future, we know that Fournier Place um, will be developed. Um, that'll hypothetically add a couple hundred residents to that side of town. Um, and likely increase the use of Caribou Trail. So if we can stay on the list at no charge to the town, I'd personally like to stay on the list. Anyone else? Councillor Hughes? I feel like I should chime in as well since we all are tonight. Um, I think I would agree with Councillor Ferguson's approach to that. I feel like we're fairly close already with setting aside 60,000. So I don't think it's smart to just kind of back away at this point as well. I think staying on the list and kind of seeing if we can get there. And I mean, I would love to um, hope that we do have an increase in traffic because of uh, new residents and things like that over there too. So it would be good to plan ahead and consider that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in agreement with that. Is that can we just table this, Jeff, until Kush looks into that to see if we can remain on the list? Yeah, I mean, essentially, we're off it now. Uh, they've made their, you know, we weren't selected, so it's a process of now going through the hoops to get back onto potentially a list. But as Kush had kind of said in his report, the likelihood is very low that you'll receive any sort of funding to help offset this cost. So if it's a priority of council, um, it may be a priority of council to fund at 100%. And whether or not that's the, you know, is it is it worth at that stage or not? Um, we can keep putting money aside and holding it, but your flip of that is that you're not able to use those funds for any other projects or any other initiatives. And the likelihood of $60,000 covering the cost of that crossing is not, is not gonna happen. It's Councillor Adams? I still would rather see this uh, 
make a motion for this to be tabled until we can get more information and make a decision with all the information rather than uh, trying to uh, guess at what the intent is. Uh, delaying it a week, I don't think is uh, critical for our decision. We've already done budget. It's already in this year's budget. So really we're working on next year's numbers. Would you like to make that motion? I just did. <laughs> motion to table is for one week. And sorry, just to be your the information that you're looking for us to bring back would be uh, one. Can we stay on the list? Two, is it uh, similar to what Councillor Ferguson had uh, mentioned? And well, I don't think we're on the list. We're anymore. not on the list. We, so yeah, probably. we're not on the we list. We will have to go back project. to CN and request to go back on the list. We have to start the process again, which requires the engineering drawings. So then, so we have to oh, that's where we're at right now. Just to just to but clear, to then. To do that. just to clear, we don't need. If you just want to send an application, you don't need an engineering drawing. Engineering drawing is only required if you want to put aside 20% of that cost. Okay. Just to request an estimate, that's what I'm saying. Councilor Brandel, do you have a comment? No, I was oh, just good. clarifying actually. So if you want to fill an application, good. if you want if you want to fill an application, I'm sure we don't require any engineering. So then standard. I would rather see us putting an application in. I, this is if we can get government funding to pay for something like this that we're we are going to need this down the road whether it's 10 years or 50 years so but then you should probably make it a, a, as far as putting the reserve in i am uh i'm fine with not adding to the reserve and reallocating and we can put in a reserve for a hundred thousand dollars for the future if that's what's required then but i still say we put in an application then so would that be your continue with the project or would that be a whole new motion I think it would be a whole new motion to task administration to peek into that box and see how we get back on that list. Yeah, it sounds like the ship has sailed on this. So okay. we either go for it or we don't, right? And the, the recommendation was not to. And then we would retask them with reopening this and peeking into the box again moving forward. Right. Make sense to everybody? So, Kush, just to confirm, just to make sure that we're both understanding the, the right. direction from CN correctly. Right. Um, so, the email that we had both received was so, in order for this, this is from CN. So, in order for the signals team to provide a better estimate for their work, they require the, the E4 drawing of this cross this location. Um, if we don't have them ready, that's where they're referring to the engineering consultant. Yeah. So, I take from that email that they're requiring the engineering drawing for this right. application. Because they responded back to that email because I asked them to provide us a, a revision of the estimate. And I understand that in order for them to revise, they need some more information on the crossing itself in the form of engineering drawing. But why, I can- Why don't we leave Steve's motion here? Why don't we vote on his motion and table this the next week? We'll let you guys see yeah, that. And we'll we can from. bring this report back with a bit more information and, and decide then. Does that make sense? Yeah. So to clarify, we are voting on what motion? Steve made a motion to table this till the next meeting. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion on that motion? Call the question to those in favor. That is carried. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. It was still carried. Communication plan. You betcha. Uh, so the purpose of this report is to present the draft communication plan for 2023. Um, instead of hooking up to the projector, I think in the interest of time, I'll direct council to page 40 of your agenda package, uh, where uh, I'll be taking you through a summary presentation of the plan. Uh, the draft plan itself can also be found in the package immediately before the presentation. So on page 40, we're, we're going to start with a little bit of research. So just, just one second here, Jason. Sorry, our packages aren't numbered. Um, oh, okay. So what page does that look like? Or you on the top? Right it's near the end, near the end of your package, and it says engagement findings. Yeah, thank you. It doesn't have mine numbers. doesn't have page mine numbers. Does. Mine doesn't either. Continue on. I think you ready? Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the engagement findings. So um, Insight, uh, who was a consultant on the economic development file before I uh, came on, as part of their rebranding and visual identity scope of work, conducted a engage, um, targeted engagement exercise where they did 27 targeted interviews with community and business leaders, as well as a community survey that solicited 122 responses from residents. Um, the questions in that survey included identification of general, of general strengths and weaknesses of the town, 
comments on the old visual identity and brand personality, perceptions of the community, and preferred communication methods and desired information outputs, which will inform um, the communication plan. So moving forward on the next slide, you'll see some of the results. So when it came to the strengths category, some of the strengths that residents and business leaders identified were the natural environment, the lake and the forest, in the community, a close net and friendly community that's family oriented, uh, for employment opportunities, sustainable, consistent industry employment, education system. Below, you'll find some of the statements um, that some, some of the residents made and community leaders. Uh, next slide is some of the weaknesses. So uh, a major weakness identified was undeveloped tourism opportunities. Um, so a lack of uh, lake access, a lack of tourism operators. Um, our business environment is reliant on forestry and oil and gas uh, and is relatively unsupported. Uh, our road conditions came up and beautification of the town were all identified as general weaknesses of the town. And once again, on the right-hand side, you'll see some of the statements. And again, all this information is just informing the goals and objectives of our communication plan to try and get ahead of some of this, um, some of this research and uh, findings. Uh, on the next page is a really interesting slide. This is a word map. Um, and so on the left-hand side, you see business and community leaders and the, the words they use to describe the general perception of the town. And on the right-hand side, you see what residents have said. And so you'll see, Business and community leaders generally had a much more positive uh, outlook on uh, Town of Slave Lake, whereas res residents had a little bit more of a negative, uh, where you see with a lot of the red words. So on the business and community leader side, it was you know vibrant, welcoming, friendly, beautiful, comfortable. Um, for residents, comfortable made it, but some of the more negative ones were outdated, dirty, unwelcoming, um, boring. So there seems to be a clear... Um, a clear disconnect between what business and community leaders think of the town and what residents think of the town. And so once again, the, our whole point of this, our, of our communication plan is try to transform some of this narrative that we're seeing. Um, the next slide you'll see um, the uh, residents and leaders, community leaders were asked directly what their preferred communication channels uh, were. And so the top three you see quite a wide margin uh, is Facebook at over 82% is the clear um, the clear preferred communication channel um, in second and third place were the website and email at approximately 40, 40 to 45 percent. Um, the least preferred uh, communication channels included text message, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, next slide, um, the type of information that uh, residents and leaders are looking for. Uh, the top three categories of information desired include community event information, recreational opportunities, uh, and transportation updates, and actually pro transportation updates and program and services off uh, offerings were actually tied. Uh, and then at the bottom three, we have infrastructure projects, strategic initiatives, and council meeting minutes. So prior to drafting, the communications department also conducted uh, a SWOT analysis, and what SWOT means is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats as it relates to um, internal and external communication. I'm not gonna go through all this, I'll just uh, highlight some of them. So a couple of our organization's strengths is we have a dedicated and experienced in-house communications team. We have motivated senior staff and council that encourage clear and transparent communication. Um, we have a knowledgeable administrative staff that are willing to collaborate when additional support is required. Um, some of the threats uh, to our communications is we have, um, once again, a very polarized community as what we saw in our general perception survey. Um, misinformation can be common and spreads quickly. Uh, and another threat is a vocal minority regularly challenge town initiatives and attempt to control the narrative with mis misinformation or providing basis claims. So once again, this communication plan try needs to try and combat that narrative and, and turn it around so the town of Slave Lake is once again in control of that narrative. Um, before I get into the details of the plan, I'll just stop there and ask if there's any questions or comments on the research. Questions or comments? Councillor Adams? Yep. Uh, so, not sure what page it is for yours, but page 33 in ours, so that's uh, under communication preferred channels. Yep. Uh, with that, you've got the breakdown on what people prefer. Do we also have, or are you able to get a, an age demographic of respondents? I'm I, curious I can, to see where we're I, at. I don't have that in front of me, Councillor, but I can try and get that for you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, continue on, Jason. Okay, thank you. So we'll go into the, the guts of the plan now, the draft plan. 
So it's really focused on two major components. One is internal communication and one is external communication. So the first one I'll go into is external communication. So communications is one of the five strategic priorities identified by council in its strategic plan. Council believes that communicating the benefits of Slave Lake and engaging with the community are key to increasing community pride. Under the communication strategic priority, two key areas of focus have been identified with or which are both addressed in this plan. Focus on proactive engagement and communication with residents and actively communicate a positive image of Slave Lake. Uh, this document will focus on both external communication with stakeholders and internal communication amongst departments and staff with the intention of building collaborative, constructive and accountable relationship with the community and within the organization. So the goals and uh, the goals of once again, this is strictly external communication. So the goals of this plan are to develop and maintain positive working relationships with all priority stakeholders, build trust in the town of Slave Lake, build mechanisms for receiving and incorporating input and or feedback from stakeholders, increase and maintain transparency where appropriate and create awareness and increase knowledge of the public process to residents. Next slide are the objectives that will also be addressed in this plan. So objective one is identifying priority stakeholders. Uh, objective two is establish a strategy for delivering key messages, identify and address barriers to engagement, document engagement activities and their outcomes, set the stage for successful engagement, and understand the cultural, traditional, and unique interests of Indigenous peoples. The guiding principles, so communication between the town of Slave Lake and stakeholders must be based on consistent and strong messaging and best practices to build trust in the town. Guiding principles for all future communication efforts and activities will include that the communication is factual, messaging is easy to understand and tailored for the intended audience, the information is not retractable, communication is timely and relevant, and communication and messaging are accessible. So how are we going to do all this? The next session actually gets into the strategies and the tactics that we'll, we'll employ to try and complete these goals and objectives. So objective one is identify priority stakeholders. So what do you see in front of you? And apology, it's um, not very zoomed in, but this is a stakeholder map where you kind of categorize your stakeholders uh, based on high impact, uh, high influence. And so this already needs to be changed and will be regularly updated. Um, one change that needs to happen is in the bottom left residents uh, needs to be moved a little bit more to the right. But essentially your most important category is your top right category. So this is the, these are the stakeholders that we need to manage closely and make sure that we have targeted communication efforts for these groups. So these groups would include our local indigenous partners with the Sawridge First Nation and Métis, number, Métis Nation number five, uh, the MD, some of the relevant provincial agencies that administration deals with, the Chamber of Commerce, our local and regional media organizations. So. This stakeholder mapping exercise is really to identify those stakeholders that you want to be communicating with and how often you're going to be communicating with them. And once again, this is very much a living document um, that will be changed uh, or updated regularly. Objective two, um, establish a strategy for key messages. Um, so as part of the town's rebranding exercise in 2022, the town of Slave Lake developed the following uh, key value points. So the three boxes you see of Northern connectivity, a strong a strong community uh, that should be a strong community and unlocking access to the great outdoors are the key value points identified. And so all key messaging moving forward will be um, key messages have been developed and tailored for residents, visitors and businesses for each of these key value points. So we're always going to have these key value points and the key messages in the back of our mind when we're when we're doing our communication outputs. And once again, that's all in the aim of consistency. So we're always trying to um, drive home the same message. So those three you see there are the key value points. And on the next slide, you'll see some of our key messages that have been um, targeted for specific uh, stakeholder groups. So external departmental messages should be sent to the communications team directly from department directors when possible to ensure that the information is accurate and approved by the department. Possible platforms for the delivery of key messages and other communications include, but are not necessarily limited to social media posts, the Void Alert app, website updates, engagement HQ, uh, our digital billboards, media releases, et cetera. The three messages you see below are actually key messages. So the first one has been developed uh, with residents in mind. So Slave Lake is home to a population that values a community-centric lifestyle, along with easy access to those services amenities found in cities. For the business community, 
Slave Lake's richness in natural assets combined with its location as a service hub for North Central Alberta with efficient access to the Edmonton Metro region means it's easier to ship goods and materials along integrated infrastructure. And for visitors, day trips and weekend adventures are easy with Slave Lake only two and a half hours away from the Edmonton Metro region. So we have a whole host of these key messages um, that have been developed for our communication outputs. And once again, it's all driving home our key value points and the strategic priorities identified by council. I think I'll pause, do another quick pause in case there's any questions or concerns up to now. Questions? Councillor Adams. <laughs> I know you yet. Funny seeing you here. <laughs> Uh, so you've got your objectives listed in that. So what what are we doing or how is it being done as far as uh, being able to measure and report on our objective key results? Uh, great question. I'm getting there. Oh, there's an evaluation portion there you go. presentation. <laughs> you pause for the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, Jason. Okay. okay. Uh, objective three, identify and address barriers to engagement. So the number one um, barrier to engagement identified by the communications team and by administration um, is social media and the use of Facebook. So Facebook has become an unofficial form for residents, which frequently becomes derailed by the same small group of individuals who use the opportunity to provide negative feedback on town activities, programming, and staff. Comments are public facing and can cause considerable damage, considerable harm, to the town of Slave Lake's image and reputation, as well as hinder potential labor attraction and retention efforts for both the town as well as local and regional businesses. Moving forward, administration plans to implement Engagement HQ as the preferred platform to improve engagement within the community and solicit feedback. Project-based initiatives will be public-facing and will create greater transparency and allow for a variety of feedback to be gathered through various engagement tools to inform project planning or other activities. Recognizing that, that the requirement to register with Engagement HQ represents a barrier to engagement in itself, the town will continue to provide opportunities for residents to provide general feedback on the town website. So <clears throat> the number one barrier to communication we've identified is the use of Facebook and the negative comments that we receive. We would like to take those comments off of our Town of Slave Lake page because that's public facing. Those discussions can continue on other um, community pages that exist on Facebook, but they will not be on the Town of Slave Lake website because it causes considerable harm to our reputation. So that's objective three. Uh, objective four, uh, document engagement activities and their outcomes. So the communications department has created and will regularly update a consultation and engagement log. The purpose of this log will be to document and summarize all input and feedback received through the town's communication consultation and engagement efforts. And what you see there is just, it's gonna be a simple spreadsheet. And what you see there with the, the date the feedback was received, um, the respondent name and the engagement tool used, whether it was Engagement HQ or the website, the project or topic of that feedback, the actual uh, feedback provided, uh, is a follow-up response required from the town, yes or no? If yes, who's the responsible staff member? Uh, and when that, and then when the response was provided by that staff member and then the actual response itself. So once again, we're not just tracking um, the feedback and the uh, input that we get, that we're, but we're making sure that we follow up and that someone's tasked to follow up. So that's objective four, uh, documenting engagement activities and their outcomes. Last objective, uh, sorry, second last objective for external communication is set the stage for successful engagement. So building and maintaining trust among stakeholders is a top priority. However, trust takes time to develop. To help build trust, the communication team will ensure all outputs and efforts are grounded in best practices. These include, but are not necessarily limited to, providing consistent messaging, encouraging open and transparent dialogue, including a mix of participation, consultation, and information type activities, providing opportunities for meaningful engagement that results in direct input to individual project design, town priorities, or other activities, and providing timely and accurate information. The implementation of Engagement HQ in combination with the town website will create a centralized location for all official engagement efforts that will allow for more opportunities for receiving feedback, building trust, and creating transparency. It is critical that residents and stakeholders feel they are being heard. The town will need to clearly demonstrate how feedback was utilized and how it informed project planning or other activities as appropriate. Objective six, six understand the cultural, traditional, and unique interests of the Indigenous peoples. 
uh, including how town activities may affect their ability to conduct traditional activities. Historic uh, and current context requires an approach to engagement that may differ from non-Indigenous populations. Indigenous communities are unique from one another and therefore the approach to engagement may differ depending on the community. The following best practices were developed by Alberta municipalities to guide municipalities in their communication and engagement efforts. And then on the following slide, you can see those um, best practices listed and we will be following those um, practices to the extent possible. Now, uh, to answer Councillor Adams' question, the evaluation portion. So um, in order for, uh, as with any plan, you need to come up with an evaluation section to make sure that you're actually completing your goals and objectives, and you have to identify metrics to evaluate that performance. So in addition to the data analytics um, that we currently uh, um, gather monthly, the following indicators have been identified to measure and evaluate performance. Um, and this is open for, uh, of course, comments and um, additions from Council. So at a minimum, monthly posts from each department highlighting key activities, programming, or their role within the organization. A greater number of respondents to engagement efforts and activities. A greater variety of feedback gathered um, from a greater variety of residents. There's going to be a quarterly review of the engagement log. Uh, review of analytics on the town website, engagement HQ, and social media to identify trends and alter strategy accordingly. And the communication plan will be renewed, reviewed at a minimum annually to ensure that it remains aligned with the town's strategic plan and is effectively completing objectives. So maybe this is a good time to pause um, for questions and comments, um, particularly on any of the objectives or the indicators for success. Councilor Adams, do you have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So we're good. Okay. So we'll move uh, with, with nothing else. We'll move on to internal communication. So internal communication is critical to the success of any organization and serves a variety of functions. Typically, there are six communication functions within an organization. I'm not going to go through the top three because there's the regulate, manage, and persuade functions are typically the responsibility of the senior leadership team. Um, so this plan focuses on the bottom three functions. I shouldn't say the bottom three, but the following three functions, which are inform, which is the function of providing needed information to personnel so they can do their jobs in an effective and efficient manner. Socialize, being integrated into the communication networks in the organization and integrate, focused on coordination of tasks, work assignments, group coordination of the fusing of work units towards a common goal. So once again, this plan just focuses on the bottom three because the top three are typically the responsibility of the senior leadership team. So the goals, uh, the goals of this plan with that in mind is team integration across departments, a clear leadership structure with roles and responsibilities clearly defined and understood, and maintain appropriate protocols when sharing or distributing information. The objectives of this plan are, once again, identify and address barriers to internal communication, set clear and realistic expectations for interdepartmental communication, improve website content and information flow to increase navigability and accessibility both internally and externally, and encourage public engagement activities for each department through Engagement HQ. Once again, we'll now move into the strategies and tactics for completing those goals and objectives. So objective one, identify and address barriers to internal communication. And I just wanna, before I get started, I wanna note these aren't necessarily bar barriers the communication team has identified that are a problem within our organization, but are simply a list of common barriers um, to internal communications amongst organizations as a whole. Um, so some common barriers identified include a lack of trust in management or colleagues, a lack of information on internal communication processes, a lack of direct contacts between all employees. Some of the influential factors are the communication skills of the manager, the quality of statements delegated by managers, the organizational structure, and the organizational culture and climate. The solution, many of these barriers can be solved by using soft management skills like targeted conversations and discussions, negotiations, direct contacts, uh, et cetera. The most often employed strategy is to address barriers, most, sorry, the most often employed strategy to address barriers is simply communicating more. Um, so once again, this isn't rocket science. Generally, when there's communication problems, we just need to communicate more and more effectively. Objective two, uh, set clear expectations for interdepartmental inter communication. Historically, 
and I haven't um, really witnessed since coming on in October, but historically the organization has occasionally struggled with obtaining all the relevant information for either internal or external communication activities in a timely manner. Clear expectations need to be set within the organization that information needs to be shared or feedback solicited for a particular project, either internally or in externally. It is the responsibility of the applicable department to provide all necessary information and documents to the communications team in a timely manner for review and message creation. So once again, historically, I believe this has been somewhat of an issue, but I haven't um, witnessed it um, since coming on, but it's something we definitely need to be aware of. Uh, objective three, improve website content and flow. Uh, the website currently being hosted by Civic Plus is difficult to navigate, conveys too much information, and contains information that is outdated or no longer relevant. While no major revisions have been budgeted for 2023, potential outdated, inf outdated information will be flagged for review and deleted. Work, uh, work for this maintenance inf initiative is currently underway. A detailed site map will be created to ensure that the website is communicating the right information in a way that is easily understood, navigable, and accessible. This site map will serve as the foundation for any revisions or improvements made to the website in the future. Uh, objective four, encourage public engagement activities for each department through Engagement HQ. Uh, engagement HQ provides the opportunities opportunity for departments to directly engage with residents on specific projects using a variety of engagement tools to tailor the message according to the intended audience. The communications department will ask that departments review work plans to identify projects that would benefit from or require engagement with residents. This will also be informed by the senior leadership team. Once engagement opportunities, requirements, and goals and objectives are identified, the communications department will assist other departments in tailoring engagement efforts and activities to ensure the right tools are used for the intended audience and solicit the required feedback. So evaluation for the internal communications plan. So the following indicators have been identified to measure and evaluate performance. Clear understanding among all employees or of organizational roles and responsibilities. Clear understanding among all employees of organizational structure. Increased quality and frequency of interdepartmental discussions. Engagement HQ, HQ tools are utilized effectively to solicit the required feedback from a variety of residents. Um, conducting peer reviews of internal communication with department heads to determine which strategies are successful and which need to be improved upon. And the communication and plan, once again, will be reviewed at a minimum annually to ensure that it remains aligned with the town's strategic plan and is an effectively completing objectives. And sorry for taking up a lot of your time, but that is it. Any questions or concerns on either internal or external communication? Thank you, Jason. Councillor Brandel. Just a comment on the website. Yeah. I totally agree that that website is very uh, hard to navigate and very convoluted. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, kudos that you're cleaning it up. Any other comments or questions for Jason? No, quiet group. Okay, thank you, Jason. Pretty scared to talk. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Council. Yeah, we need it. Yeah. <coughs> Councillor Ferguson. I'll make a motion to accept this uh, information as presented. All the question those in favor. That is carried. Moving on to committee minutes. Uh, the watershed has not met. Alberta North Central Alliance, we did meet. We were working on finalizing our strategic plan, but uh, unfortunately we can never get everyone in the room or in this case over Zoom. So we're still at a little bit of a standstill there, but hopefully we can get all parties to the table for our next meeting. Uh, Try council health. We're gonna have to table that one, I think. Right. Okay. Tourism Society. Comes quick with the ones that are missing. Yeah. Life, life comes at you fast. Okay. So a couple. Yeah, turn my mic on. That would help. Um, so a couple updates from tourism. Um, we are continuing to plan our Beach Fest event that is coming this August 13th. Um, we are working on holding the Sandcastle competition for that weekend, as well as a possible schedule of paddleboard, kayak races, beach volleyball, live music, food trucks, bonfires on the beach, fireworks, kids games, possibly a corporate challenge of some kind, art on the beach. We have a ton of ideas that we're working on. Uh, marketing our beautiful beach and expanding this much beloved event is a focus for our group at this time. So we look forward to that coming together. Um, 
We um, were invited to take part in an Indigenous tourism uh, type of town hall that our tourism coordinator attended just last week. It was very beneficial. Uh, one of the biggest takeaways from attending this uh, uh, last week uh, was that Indigenous tourism is a driving force in the tourism industry in Alberta. People worldwide are looking for authentic Indigenous experiences and looking to Alberta to seek those experiences. Indigenous Tourism Alberta is working at building strategic partnerships across the province as they have recognized that there is a need for more product to meet this demand. As a society, we have many ideas on how we can provide these experiences in our own region, and we are brainstorming ideas and looking to reach out to and work with uh, local Indigenous businesses. Indigenous Tourism Alberta is also continuing to bring workshops to teach cultural awareness throughout Alberta. The goals for these workshops are to help support um, and do it in a respectful manner and encourage relationship building with Indigenous tourism operators and possible industry partners. Um, so we look forward to continuing to work on that and, and uh, grow our understanding and how to authentically, sorry, promote Indigenous tourism operators. Um, so that's a really great uh, thing that we've been working on and we've kind of made some really great connections there that we're excited about. Uh, we also have some partnership ideas that we're working on with the Slave Lake Airport. We'll be co-hosting an event with them and Elevate Aviation this coming Canada Day. There will actually be an Alberta Air Tour making a stop here on Canada Day. There will be a large group of 40 or so planes that we will have a chance to come and welcome them at the airport and possibly host an event to share information about our region. The Elevate Aviation cross-country tour empowers youth and women to consider a career in aviation through inspirational presentations and behind-the-scenes tours. Um, we are also possibly looking at doing a skydiving event with the Slave Lake Airport come fall. Um, we have a few other possible projects in the work to works to partnership with them on. And just let me flip to my other notes. Sorry, guys, longer update, but there's lots happening. Uh, we're looking at holding our operators meeting uh, March 17th here in town in partnership with Travel Alberta. We will have a rep there to kind of help us host a round table. We will be inviting all sorts of existing tourism operators, local businesses, hotels, restaurants, etc. in the area to come out and meet with us, make connections and talk about the future of tourism in our region and how we can continue to work together. Uh, we're continuing to work on our website updates. Uh, we will be uh, in the beginning stages of planning our familiarization tours to be held this May. Uh, we're finalizing our plans for our strategic doing session. And one last reminder, we do have the Slave Lake Slam ice fishing tournament that is happening every weekend, the month of February. Um, there's a couple of rental companies that I've seen that are sharing a lot of it. So there's that you can go out and rent an ice fishing shack and have a great time. And for more details on that, you can check it out on our Slave Lake region Facebook page. So we're busy. Yeah. Questions? I have a question. Did you reach out to the Sarge First Nation about the Indigenous tourism stuff? No, not yet. This was um, just like the um, Indigenous Tourism Society's kind of town halls and things that they held that we kind of attended first. Do you know um, if they, they were... attended it? I'm not sure. I'll have to ask our co tourism coordinator. Um, I do know she made a lot of connections and I do know that there was a few people she spoke with that were very happy to have a representative from Slave Lake. So that kind of makes me think that there might not be much involvement here locally, but we're hoping to, you know, be able to spur that and, and get some movement there. I know yeah. it's some, uh, must have been tri-council meetings in the past where uh, Chief Twin mentioned they were they were looking into indigenous tourism if there was a something to coincide with or other stuff going on so yeah we, like a like an experience we yeah, could offer in but, conjunction with yeah, kind exactly. of thing. So, yeah and that's what we're hoping to get to here it's just kind of getting all these people in a room and kind of making these connections right so but we're we're getting somewhere we are gaining some traction great. with it and even just the connections that uh, our coordinator has been able to make um we you know are talking to people who do the marketing at the edmonton international airport and like lots of different really positive things are happening just by attending these meetings and finally actually having a designated admin who is um you know representing the slave lake region so yeah i'm excited to see where it goes nice thank you great update uh library all right uh they're starting to get things lined up with the auditors and met with and completed the request currently uh attended information ses sessions regarding the homeless estimation project library will be participating and staff will be attending training soon the surveys will be administered uh, during the month of March. 
programming uh, so far has a total of 35 events were held with an attendance of over 753 in total. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Community Futures. All right, attended a training on governing of the CF loan fund and reviewed the CF loan portfolio. Uh, this was actually quite educational in its reach. Uh, one of the, I guess, to say disappointing numbers that came out of it was the uh, the ratio of slave like businesses that are taking advantage of the loans offering that community futures have and to get those uh, that growth going. We currently account for roughly 22% of the loans are out of Slave Lake for the whole region, yet we account for more than half the population. So it'd be nice to see that growth and that expansion going, but they do have a plan in place going forward. Homeless Coalition. Uh, so short update here tonight. As of January 19th, we've had 706 overnight stays uh, with the ages of the individuals ranging from 25 to 65. Uh, the biggest news right now, though, is that our current exec executive director is moving. And as such, we're working in a much uh, reduced role. So that means we have an opening for an executive director. Uh, we are currently accepting applications for this position. So if interested, please reach out to the coalition and submit a resume. Question, if the uh, if the position's not filled, what is, is there plans in place to keep operating so we can make it through the winter? Yes, absolutely. We have a full transition plan that's been developed so that we have the operational capacity within the organization to uh, fulfill our commitments for the season. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, CRC. Tyler is gone. MPC, Kimberly. Yeah. Um, so update from MPC, uh, we have approved an application for an outdoor recreation facility, which would be the inflatable water slide that is set to be uh, placed out at Big Fish Bay to be used by their customers during the summer months. Um, the second uh, approval for it was an application for discretionary uses, self-storage facility and a variance to the rear yard setback of the self-storage facility, as well as permitted uses such as a major renovation to the existing commercial slash residential building to convert the commercial space two residential units and the installation of two fascia signs thank you airport commission all righty so we met last monday uh we submitted a grant application uh, a month or so ago so the airport can develop a master plan we should know in march if we are successful with that grant or not uh so an update on the shoreline stabilization after the last high water event a few years ago, we lost a substantial amount of our airport land. And if this trend continues, it will threaten our runway. Um, so as of January 23rd, we were, we were informed that the, the Disaster Mitigation and Adaption Fund opened. Uh, so this fund will cover 40% of project costs to stabilize our shoreline. However, the preliminary estimate of $4.3 million to stabilize the shoreline would still leave the airport covering over two and a half million, which is not an expense the airport can undertake at this time. Uh, so the airport is continuing to look at uh, more affordable options um, and uh, in consideration of this grant. Uh, so preliminary 2022 budget numbers, due to revenue being on nearly $40,000 higher than expected and expenses being roughly $23,000 lower than expected, we have an operational surplus of approximately $62,000. Uh, these num numbers are subject to change though, once we have our final audit done. And lastly, we are pur purchasing an asphalt melter slash applicator. This should help us stay on top of cracks that arise and provide a substantial cost savings compared to contracting it out. And that's the airport update. Thank you, Bryce. Protective services? Um, yeah, so the emergency services are kind of combining the uh, RCMP bylaw and the fire department. They're doing a pull to the right campaign. So when you see the emergency vehicles coming and you see the lights and flashing, please pull to the, the, the right because people aren't and it um, it's a big fine. So $243 fine and demerits on your license. So they're going to be doing a big campaign and you're going to be seeing that everywhere. Um, and there's going to be an emergency services ball on April 29th at the Slave Lake Inn. It's going to be a formal event. So all the emergency services will be in full dress uniform. It's going to be auction items, uh, dueling pianos, dinner, and all proceeds will go to the various emergency charities, such as victim services and the like. Um, 
the hospital um, still staffing their 50% vacancy on nurses, and they have um, some beds closed due to the vacancies, but they are expecting some contract nursing coming to fill in. Uh, four physicians short at this, this time. Um, you're, you're probably waiting for about a month or more for your appointments, uh, but walk-ins are still happening. And then they're doing that uh, new program, um, Connect Care. So appointments are going to be even taking longer because uh, they want 15 minutes to, uh, uh, they're making the appointments longer because they want 15 minutes so you can fill out all the information on the Connect Care. So then um, what used to be a 15 minute appointment is going to be a half an hour. So they're going to be able to see less people because of it. So you know, again, your appointments will be longer. So bear with them. Um, they, it is a busy clinic. The six physicians saw 47,000 patients in 2022. So uh, it's a lot of people going through that building. Um, oh, and the Alberta sheriffs, um, she's taking new training on saliva tests um, for cannabis and doing alcohol testing roadside. That's new. Uh, she just did a, a log haul blitz and found one impaired driver. So, um, I think that was it. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, one more. Um, they're doing a beach cleanup day um, with Alberta Parks. They're discussing whether it's going to be a public event or not, or they're just going to do it um, with the, the town and MD or not, but uh, more information to come on that. Perfect. Uh, when people uh, the pull over to the right campaign, what are, what are people currently doing? Just not pulling over? Exactly. Huh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I pull over for random you know, lights. You just pull over. Yeah, right. so, so, yeah. so people just start ignoring it. Yeah. So I think they're going to be concentrating in the schools too. So um, teaching people at a young age because, it, but they, they, they said it's people of all age and, and yeah. Didn't know that would ever be an issue. Yeah. It's, apparently it's big. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's it for committee updates. Looking for a motion. Councillor Hughes. Motion to accept the updates as verbally given. Perfect. Call to question those in favor. That is carried. Uh, Mayor's Corner, just remind everybody, Ross Fest goes to the 20th. Check out the town website or Facebook page for updates. And I just wanted to give a shout out to some of the young kids from our region who represented uh, Slave Lake at the Arctic Winter Games. Uh, Luke Kubel for snowshoeing. Trader Pearson, Josh Brewer, Grayson Conrad, Jonas Lilo, and Damien Hill for boys hockey, and then Skyler Hill for winning gold in the U18 girls hockey. Yeah, and I'm sure there's more athletes, but those are the ones I know. So <laughs> congratulations, and sorry if I missed you. That's all for Mayor's Corner. Uh, motion to go into closed session. Councillor Adams. Motion to go into closed. Call to question those in favor. That is carried. Thank you.